ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, this is my co-host Teddy, and today we're putting the AMD Ryzen 3 2200G up against the Ryzen 5 2400G in this sort of stock and overclocked value comparison. So let's jump right into it then. So the Ryzen 3 2200G is a 4-core, four 4-thread four CPU, coming with a 3.5 GHz base clock, a 3.7 GHz boost clock, 8 Vega GPU cores, and an 1100 MHz GPU speed. The R5 2400G also has 4 cores, but it has 8 threads, a 3.6 GHz base clock, and a 3.9 GHz boost clock, 11 Vega GPU cores, and a 1250 GPU speed. So the 2400G has quite a few advantages over the 2200G. So let's talk about how they were tested. So they were tested with the ASUS Strix B350F motherboard. Now I recently reviewed this. I'll leave that video in a link in the description down below. But this is a fantastic motherboard uh, for things like this. Just a really good B350 in general. Now as far as the memory goes, I tested it with 16 gigabytes of Corsair Dominator Platinum memory at 3000 megahertz for all the tests. Both were tested with the stock Wraith Stealth cooler. This cooler is good enough, as we'll talk about very soon, uh, but it did a you know, fairly decent job, especially on the 2200G. And of course, I did all the tests with the onboard graphics, no sort of individual graphics card or anything like that. So let's talk about the overclocking and the temperatures then. So, <laughs> as far as uh, overclocking goes, I mean, both of them can be overclocked. But even at stock speeds, the 2400G runs quite a bit hotter than, it, than the 2200G. Uh, this is obviously for the aforementioned reasons, higher speeds, you know, more threads, all the rest of it, the higher GPU clock, all of that plays into it. Uh, requiring more voltage to be going through it for all of those things. So it does run hotter at stock speeds, and this cuts in to its overclocking headroom. So with these CPUs, or APUs I should say, you can overclock the CPUs on them with the stock cooler, but that's not really what you want to be doing. What you want to do is just overclock the graphics. Uh, this is mainly because they're going to get really hot anyways, as I'll show you in just a second, and it's, it's where you're going to see the biggest gains. So as I said before, the 2200G's GPU clock is 1100 MHz from the factory. Now with overclocking, uh, I managed to get that up to 1600 MHz, and it was pretty happy there. Most people should be able to get over 1500 MHz. Uh, 1600 MHz is a really good amount to get it up to. Now with the 2400G, I only managed to get it up to 1340 MHz. On the GPU clocks and that wasn't because it couldn't go higher it was because the temps were getting so high so I ran a bunch of different tests and I took the highest temperature I saw them go up to and as you guys can see on the screen right now even at the stock temps of 2400 G is higher but overclocked it was getting really high 92 degrees Celsius now I didn't see any throttling there no throttling at all but that is getting close to it, and that is getting really, really hot. So I didn't really want to go anywhere beyond that point because it was already getting really hot. So this is an advantage that the 2200G will have if you're using them with the stock Wraith cooler uh, is because it, you're going to have that overclocking headroom because it just runs cooler in general than the 2400G. Of course, this would all be negated if you use like a 120 millimeter air cooler or something like that, but we'll touch on that later on in this video. So let's get over to the benchmarking then and see how these two APUs perform. So as I said, I'll show you guys their stock performance. These are all a big mix of different things. I ran all the games at 1080p because I think that's what most of you guys would want to be doing, running them at 1080p and then turning the graphics down to low or something like that. And of course, I showed you guys the overclock results as well, which is a good comparison because of course the 2400G has, the more, has more GPU cores but the 2200G's GPU is running at quite a bit of a higher speed once they were overclocked. So let's jump into it and see how both of them performed.
means we're back. So what do we make of the benchmarks then? Well, the 2400G is the more powerful CPU. Well, that's pretty obvious. It has double the threads and also has those slightly higher clock speeds on the CPU. So of course it was going to do better in things like Handbrake and Cinebench. But the 2200G still put up a pretty good fight, especially once it was overclocked. Of course, the 2400G still won in their clock stock clock speeds. Uh, but once you overclock the 2200G, it actually got pretty close to the 2400G at its stock speeds. Now, if we look towards the average FPS, you see that, of course, at the stock speeds, a good win there, about 10 FPS for the 2400G. But once you overclock that 2200, it got pretty close to the stock 2400G. And, of course, when the 2400G is overclocked, it opened up a bit of a gap. But still a very good result there. Just think, if you added on a 120mm air cooler to either of these CPUs, obviously that gap would be expanded more. Um, but for most people, they're going to be using these APUs with the stock cooler. And it just shows that because the 2200G does run cooler, you can you know, extend it quite a bit with overclocking that GPU clock speed. Which brings us now to the conclusion, and what do I make of these two APUs, and which one do I say is the better value, and which one would I go for? So right now, here in New Zealand, at Playtech, you can pick up the Ryzen 3 2200G for 169 New Zealand dollars. If you want to pick up the Ryzen 5 2400G, that's going to see you back 269, or 259, I should say, New Zealand dollars. So it's going to be $90 more here in New Zealand. So what do you get for your $90 more? We're basically going to get about 10 FPS in my testing anyway. That's still a decent jump up for $90, but of course you're going to have to weigh if that's good enough for you. However, if you're a person that's going to be overclocking, then that all changes. The 2200G with that GPU clock speed right up there does a very, very good job. And I was seriously impressed by it. Of course, you have that overclocking headroom there. So I would basically sum up the video this way. If you're going to go for, if you're not interested in overclocking, you're just going to you know, care about the stock speeds then you're really just going to have to weigh that up for yourself. Is that extra $90 going to be worth it for about 10 FPS? However, if you're a person that's going to be overclocking, then uh, and, and you don't think you'll be buying an aftermarket cooler for them, you're just probably going to use that stock Wraith Stealth cooler, then I would go for the 2200G because you have more overclocking headroom there. You can get that GPU speed right up, and it's going to give you some seriously good performance. And that's basically how I would put it. If you're going to go for a 120mm air cooler with them, then yeah, you get the 2400G is going to work out better, especially if you do some more serious overclocking on it with both the CPU and the GPU. But I still just think the 2200G is the better value. Not only would you not necessarily need to invest in a 120mm air cooler, you can use the stock one and just overclock that GPU up and you're going to get some really good performance. And it's just the better value for money APU out of the two. And that's the one I would go for. However, that is just my opinion. So I want to know what you guys think. In the comment section down below, let me know what you think. Would you go for the 2200G? Or would you pay the extra and go for the 2400G and leave me a reason? I'd really like to know. Now, I thank you all for watching this video. Please subscribe to Tech Showdown if you haven't already and like the video. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.